cells. Chromosomes, however, are still seen attached to their sister chromatids. So, in order to separate the sister chromatids from each other, each haploid cell undergoes another round of division. But before moving ahead, the haploid cells enter a small resting phase called the interkinesis. It's a short phase with no activities involved. After going through this phase, the cell is all set to undergo the second round of meiotic division. The next round is called the meiosis II. It also includes four stages. In other words, meiosis II can be considered as the mitosis of haploid cells. The first phase is the prophase II. Here, the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus begin disappearing. The chromatid condenses to become short and compact and gains a typical chromosome structure. In metaphase II, the chromosomes align at the equator and the spindle fibers attach to the respective sister chromatids. In anaphase II, the chromatids separate from each other and move to opposite poles due to the contraction of spindle fibers. Finally, in telophase II, the chromosomes decondense. The nuclear membrane envelopes the chromosomes and the nucleolus also begins to reappear. The chromatids form the daughter chromosomes at both the poles. Last but not the least, cytokinesis helps divide the cell into two. Since two cells have simultaneously undergone meiosis II, we get four haploid cells at the end. The haploid cells are also called gametes and are genetically different from each other. And why is that so? Genetic difference mainly occurs due to recombination between the chromosomes, which takes place during meiosis I. And with this, we come to an end with the concept of meiosis.